Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Hell's Drummer, and welcome to the game review of Digimon Story Cyber Sleuth. Now, before I get too far into this review, I want to apologize. I have been inactive for the last three or four days. I can't remember if it's been four or three. Either one of the two. Um, the last video I posted was the Chubby Bunny Challenge, which not a lot of people watch, but I don't really care. And that was, I was starting to get sick then. The day after, I went down badly. And I don't have any videos pre-recorded, so I kind of just had to go with not uploading. Because, I mean, a lot of other YouTubers do record when they're sick, but I was pretty bad. And I didn't want to... I didn't want to try and record with my voice the way it was, and I was I went down bad. I, I, I couldn't even play games for fun. So, I just couldn't focus on the mic. Like, yeah, I was, I was pretty bad. Anyway, enough of that. I made my apologies. <laughs> Hopefully, I'll get back on track with recording daily once again. But, well, not just recording daily, I mean uploading daily again. Starting with this one. Um, Anyway, so the game review of Digimon Story Cyber Sleuth. Now... I, when I first heard about this game coming out, I got really excited, and I do actually have a playthrough on my channel, I've got two, I've got part one and part two, which I will unfortunately have to say that I am stopping that series, because number one, a good mate of mine, or my, my best friend I should say, he's playing it, well he was playing it, um, and he warned me something not too long after I started saying that he has already he or had already clocked about forty hours of gameplay, and he was only about halfway through the game at that point. And I thought to myself, I'm like, well, sure, a lot of that was him training, but at the same time, that that's that's still a lot of hours of gameplay to put on YouTube, and like, because I hate cutting in my videos, I I really don't like. I try to show as much game footage of me playing the game, like, going through the game as possible, but, look, even if you say he spent 30 hours training and 10 hours actually playing the game, that's still 10 hours to get halfway through the game, and if I only do 20 minutes, 15 to 20 minutes usually is my limit for recording games, it kind of makes, like, because, you know, what, that's three, that's three videos an hour, so, that's, like, what, that's 30 parts to get halfway through the game. To me, that's too much. And I know there's a lot of games out there that do take more time and you could probably do them better. But at the moment, I just didn't have time for that. And another thing that also makes my decision come true about stopping Digimon at this current time as well is Bandai Namco actually got me for copyright with it. Which, I'm, I'm, I'm not complaining, it's their products. I don't own it. I don't intend to say that I own it in any way, shape or form. But... They, yeah, they, they claimed copyright on it, and it's just like, it wasn't really that big a concern. Like, the main thing that is stopping the series is the fact of how long the actual game is. So, but it's it's still like a part reason, where it's just like, well, you know, getting a copyright thing every time I upload a part to it, it's kind of annoying being flagged. So, anyway, about the actual game, though. I found the gameplay itself, and the I, I, I don't know, I found the gameplay really... Fun. Like, I, I love the idea of digivolving everything, and yeah, you know, I found that aspect really fun. The only thing that really annoyed me about the game is how tedious the story is. Like, it's not just, it's not just like, oh, you play through a bit of story parts here, and you can train whenever you kind of want. Sometimes that story gets you, and you're stuck in it for like three chapters of the game, and you're sitting there going, I need to train, but you're not giving me anywhere to train. And, yeah, and then, then it just, and some of the missions, like, you have to keep going back and forth between, like, the, the being the detective that you are in the game, to being the cyber sleuth, or being you, and going through your own story, and some of the things that it makes you do, it's just like, how is this anything to do with the actual story of how this plot is coming together? And to me... Like, don't get me wrong, ever since the first chapter of the game, you were seeing the story elements there, and it was trying to build up the game. But I, I found some of the, just some of the little things you had to do, you had to do to get through the game, I found a little tedious. It was just like, really? 
all I want to do is get to a, 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 the next better level so I can train better and get the better Digimon. So I suppose that's more of a story thing, isn't it? Real, realistically, the story of the game. But you know, for actual, for actual gameplay wise, like I, I, enjoy, I enjoy the fact that you get three Digimon on you because the last Digimon game I played personally was Digimon World 2003, which was on the original PlayStation 1, which I enjoyed. Don't get me wrong. I loved it, and for the time it was, okay, the graphics weren't the greatest. A PS1 game, what are you expecting? But the, it, it was a fantastic game. I loved it. The only thing that annoyed me about it is the fact that you only had one Digimon on your team. Like, you, yeah, you had a team of three, but you only had one Digimon on you. And, yeah, it was kind of painful having to fight one-on-one. -on -one. Like, it was like Pokemon almost to some degree, but I don't know. I found it... Sometimes the challenges would be really hard. And with this game, sure, I mean, usually when you fight someone or fight a boss or whatever it is, it's sometimes it can be like three on three and stuff. But it just, it gives it more variety. And I, I don't know, I, I really enjoyed the fact that it was three on three Digimon. I really also enjoyed the fact that you could have about 11 Digimon on your team if you had the right, right amount of memory. And... You could switch them, and not and not just like oh one at a time. Like you could go into your little menu, hit change, and you could switch your entire party in one go. I thought that was really cool, and I, I've got I've got to give it a thumbs up for that. Like that is just, and yeah, I th I thought it was really good, but um, yeah, I, I enjoyed that. The story of the game, at first, it was confusing. Throughout the time of the game, I grew to actually really like the story. I don't want to give spoilers because, in my opinion, if you guys if you guys have a PS Vita or a PS4 and you guys love Digimon, I really suggest you buy the game, honestly. I know I should be saying that at the end of the game, but at the end of the review, sorry. But no, it's a solid game. Like I don't, I don't want to try and ruin anything for anybody who hasn't actually played it. I found the story really good. It gets... About Chapter 10, it got really really, like, it, it the, chapter 10 is where it just it spun it, and everything started happening, and it was, it was really cool, like, I really enjoyed the way it just did that, like, it just tipped you on your head, and then the next thing, you've got to go through all this other stuff, so, I thought it was really good for that command, um, oh, another little feature they've added, too, is, obviously, you get, like, a box, like, like in Pokemon and stuff, like, there's a box where you can store every, all your Digimon and stuff, like the Digibank, or whatever it's called, or something like that, um, I didn't mind that, but then I found out they had farms. Now, the only annoying... Oh, actually, I probably should give you the positives about the farms first. Number... It's... Uh, for, you, for those who don't know who are just watching this, the farms are able... You can put up to 10 Digimon in each farm, which you get a total of five farms throughout the game. And the idea of the farm is that you can put them in and they level up naturally. So you could have four or five on your team, but then have 10 in your box or your farm. And they'll level up naturally throughout the game as you go through the game. Or you, you do anything. You could be training and they'll be training. It's slower. But it, 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 it like gradually levels them up. Which is pretty cool. Like if only Pokemon adapted something like that. I, mean, I know there's the daycare in Pokemon. But like they should adapt something where you could do m multiple of them. But you know. I'm not trying to discuss Pokemon here. Um, but the farms aren't just useful for that. Like you can discover cases for your Cyber Sleuth thing. So you can do more jobs and stuff. Um, there's a way of item development. So you can develop some really cool items and some really useful ones. The main one I got help out of was the Tactician USB, which took me ages. But I won't get into that. Um, you can level up your Digimon stats in it. Like you can like like the effort values in Pokemon and stuff. You can purposely level up a particular stat. And it also depends on the Digimon's nature or... Oh, what do they call it? Personality. Because you get many different kinds of um, personalities in the game. And, yeah, it's, it's in certain ones, I think they give you like a 5% bonus to that stat. Because every Digimon at level 99 has a particular stat. Like, they get to this much stat or they get to whatever. And with, with the personalities, you can make it 5% better depending on what one you give it in what particular stat. So... That was cool. Um, I think that's what I think that's what you can do in the farms. I might be wrong. Like, there, are pretty, um, there might be other things too, but I just can't think of them off the top of my head. Um, oh, another thing. Throughout the main game, I think I did cover this in my actual playthrough. You scan the Digimon every time you find them, and you can 
once you get like a scan rate of 100%, you can make the Digimon straight off the bat, like so you don't have to get it from like a baby and go all the way up to, what do you call it, like Megas and stuff, like you can start off like you can find Greymon or something, and you can get it at Champion straight away, more so than like, you know, having to get, I can't think of it's Baby's Evolution, but like, you know, more so than having to get Agumon or the other ones, I can't remember the name, God, <laughs> there's too many of them. There's over 240 Digimon in this game, so there's a lot of Digimon to try to remember. A majority of them were Megas, which is pretty cool, because let's face it, the Megas are the ones you want to use. You don't want, like, 200 babies and only a few Megas. That, that would have been crap, but... Another system they, they did in this game, too, was, like... You can't just, like... <sighs> nearly anything could Digivolve into everything, to some degree. Like, if you took... Because uh, you can D-Digivolve up and down, which... The benefits of that was to raise your ABI, which is one of the stats they have, and you need that stat to digivolve the Digimon that you guys had to better things. Like some some of the like the really hard to get megas would like require 80 ABI. And the only way to get the stat up that I noticed is when you you digivolve up and you level like as you're leveling them up to digivolve them up, the ABI slowly goes up, and then you go you have to go backwards, so you'd go, you know, Agumon, Greymon, Metal Greymon, you know, uh, War Greymon, and you'd notice in all that leveling, you'd probably get 20, 30 ABI, but then you go backwards, and it raises the ABI again, but I also noticed, the higher level you are when you de-digivolve them, the more the ABI goes up, so if you just digivolved it from Metal Greymon to, to War Greymon, um, let's say you got, I don't know, 5 ABI for that. So you're sitting like, I don't know, 55. If you digi -D digivolved it straight away, it may go to 60. So it would gain another 5 by going backwards. But if you leveled it up to maybe, I don't know, level 50, then went backwards, you'd get 12 ABI instead of 5 ABI for de digivolving it. So that, that, it was, it was cool that you could get it quicker that way, but at the same time, it also required more effort because then you had to level War Greymon up the 50 levels, then go backwards, which was a little annoying in my book, but at the same time, it made the ABI go up quicker, which made the whole experience better. Um, the other benefit to DDG evolving as well is obviously you're like you're not just stuck with Agumon, and Agumon doesn't just go Greymon and blah blah. Like you could DDG evolve like I'm pretty sure Agumon could go into like Greymon and Growlmon, Miramon, and stuff like that. So it was like a tree that went all over into in, into different directions, and, so, and vice versa, when you de-digivolve, like, sometimes, if you went Agumon to Miramon to Skull Miramon, and then you went backwards from Skull Miramon, you could end up with a completely different rookie Digimon, and I found it really cool that, pretty much, no matter where you start on the digi, the Digimon grid, like, I, you probably can't go everywhere, but most Digimon can probably cover, I, I reckon, a good 80% of the grid by itself. So it was really cool that they incorporated it so that even if you max statted one particular Digimon, that particular Digimon could digivolve into 80% of it anyway. So it was a really cool little feature of that too. Replay value. Now, <laughs> this is actually a really weird one to cover in this particular game because there is a new game plus in it. I haven't actually tried it for myself yet, but apparently from what I've read online, you you keep all the memory that you have, which is the memory, I don't know if I have explained it or not, but the memory is how much, like, how much, how many Digimon you can have, and you get memory ups throughout the game, so you can get your memory pretty high, like, my memory, oh, I can't remember how high my memory was at the end of the game, it was definitely over the 100 mark, but I can't remember exactly where, but, um, I know, apparently to some people online, you can get a maximum of 250, or 55, or something, memory, but you, the only way to get that is you had to go through New Game Plus. So, that's one of the benefits of it. I, I believe you keep all the Digimon. The only thing you don't hold on to, I believe, don't quote me on this, is the key items you get through the game. So, if there's something that you got particularly through the game, it would be gone, obviously, when you go to New Game Plus. But the good thing is, as you go through the story missions again, you'll get the same rewards again. So any memory up that you've already gotten, you'll get again. So that's how you can get your memory up. And you can get all the, like, the little extra items here and there. And 
Sounds good. The only negative side to it, the only thing that has kind of stopped me from doing New Game Plus at the moment is, like I said before with the story, it's tedious. And this, especially at the start of the game, like even at the end of the game, it got a little bit crazy. But it, it it's oh, sitting off through the scenes. And that's one thing. There's so much dialogue in this game to read. And, and that's one thing I had problems with when I was actually doing my playthrough for it. Because it was just so much dialogue. Like... Not all of like some of it was read, and that's the, uh, not, another negative thing to it too. Is I suppose it's Japanese audio, which honestly doesn't concern me because it's subtitles and there's dialogue in English. But at the same time, it's just like they could have given an English audio for it. Like I'm, I'm, I'm sure there's somebody they could have paid for it. But whatever. I, I, I honestly, I don't care. In the end of the game, at the end of the day, it's a good game. So, um. So, so my repay value, like maybe I will once time goes past. I'll give it a, I'll, I'll give it another playthrough to see if there's anything extra in New Game Plus. I, like, I really don't know. Maybe there's, maybe there's extra stuff you can do in it. I really actually don't know. I haven't really read that much into it. But the good news is at least you don't have to just replay th through the game for just doing the game again. Like it gives you a bit of a, you know, New Game Plus thing. And I, I really enjoy New Game Plus. Like I've always loved the idea. That games these days, and a lot of games these days do have a new game plus revenue with them, and it's to me it's a really good thing. Like, cause you want, like, I love games where you can pick them up again and play them, and it's it's all well and good to play through the game again, but sometimes you don't want to play through it again at level one. Sometimes you want like, like like I, I did it with my one of my favorite new game pluses that I did was Jack and Daxter uh, number three. I used to love, like, I got up to, like, New Game Plus 6, just playing through it over and over again, because the first time you play through the game, it's kind of, wasn't really that difficult of a game, but, like, you had to struggle getting all the guns and getting all the vehicle upgrades and stuff, but when you went New Game Plus, you had everything. So it's kind of like going through a game again, you had to face the challenges, but this time, you had the really good weapons, the weapon upgrades, you had everything, and eventually, like, I went through the game, you got like all the precursor orbs and stuff, and you get like unlimited bullets and stuff like that. So you could just go through the game and wipe everything else like that. The bosses are easy, but like, like I love when games do that because, like, a lot of Final Fantasy games don't. Which, as you guys may or may not know, Final Fantasy is my favorite game, or the Final Fantasy game series is my favorite, and not a lot of them have New Game Plus. Like, there's I think like um twelve does or twelve two I should say does or whatever you want to call it. But that's, that's the only one that comes to mind that has a new game plus. Maybe there are others. Tell me in the links below. I'd like to know. <laughs> for cu curious things for my own sake. But, yeah, I think I think it's a common thing that games should have these days, this new game plus feature, because it, it, it encourages replay value. And, which, I mean, don't get me wrong, it isn't like the actual game producers get any replay value out of it. But then, like, for example, the Soul series. That's like, to me, that is a really, really popular thing in New Game Plus because that game is built to be played through again. Like, it, you can, like, you don't need to play through it again, but you can, and again, it, it means you can get everything because there are certain avenues, like, there are certain choices that you make throughout the game that require you to go different places. Anyway, I'll get off New Game Plus now because I've got, got ranted way too much into it. My actual rating for the game, now, I haven't actually really thought much about this until actually recording, which is what I'm doing right now for it. <sighs> I want to give it a high score because I really enjoy the game. Like, I enjoy the Digimon, the playing of the aspect of it, the, the training of them and stuff. Which, as boring as that does sound, it's actually really fun to do with the Digimon games, much like in Pokemon. The only thing that lets it down for me is the tediousness of the story and how it just drags on and on and like I'm I'm not saying that they should have made the story short and easy but I know I just found there's so much useless dialogue in it so I think that unfortunately that will have to strike the game down honestly I think this game uh, I want to say three and a half but then I feel like that's understating it as well like I feel like it's more than that but at the same time I can't give it four I don't know why, I, th I, th I feel as if 4 is an oversale, but I don't want to say 3 point, what, 7, 5, that's stupid. I think I'm just going to say 4 stars, like, to me, 
it's gameplay and the way the whole Digimon Digivolving and all the training is really fun makes up for the fact that the story can be a little dragged on. And let's face it, the story is good. It's just there's so much of it that I think they could have cut out and threw in the bin. But that's my opinion. I really don't know. Maybe you guys enjoyed it better than I did. I, I don't know. I'm giving it a four because it's just a good game. I Like I said, I enjoy the, the Digimon aspect of it. So yeah, I'm, I'm going to go with four stars for this one. Um, I probably would play it again myself, honestly, when, when, after maybe a few months of it, and I'll go New Game Plus and give it a go. Because I really, I really did enjoy the game, and when I found out about it, I lost my mind. So, <laughs> I, I was so excited for it. So, oh yeah, so yeah, if, if you guys don't actually have the game, and you're watching this, you know, to find out if the game's worth it or not, honestly, worth it. Go get it. If you've got a PlayStation 4 or a Vita, buy it. I mean, it, it's expensive. Like, what I paid... 70 or 80 dollars for it on the ps4 wasn't on sale or anything but i, I paid for it and honestly it was worth it I, I, i'd pay it's a good game i would pay the 80 like I, i'm not even like you know how there are some games out there that you're like oh i really want to buy this game it looks good but you then you look at the price tag and you see here and think i don't think i'd pay that much for it like maybe once once it it's on sale, I'd buy it, but I'm not going to pay full price for it because it just doesn't seem like my type of game to pay full price for it. And I know that's I know that's really bad to the game producers because a lot of people put a lot of time and energy into making these games, and the the reason that cost is so high is because it, the amount of work and energy they've put into it, they need to make a profit on it. But there are certain games. Every every game has got a particular game that they like, they like playing, but they're not like massively. Like, I've got to have it the first day, and I've got to get it full price. So, I don't know. I think I think it's worth the price tag. Um, and if you don't have a PS4 or a Vita, buy one and buy the game. It was amazing. Seriously. If you love Digimon, and you don't have a PlayStation 4 or a Vita, you, honestly, you're an idiot for not owning a PlayStation, in my opinion. But, <laughs> to me, if you love Digimon that much, you will buy a PS4 just to get it. Because, seriously, come on, it's Digimon. If you love, if you're watching this new and, and you love Digimon, you will do anything for Digimon. <laughs> God damn! I mean, let's face it. The only reason I own a 3DS is because I love Pokemon. <laughs> that's that's probably, there are other games on it that are good, but primarily Pokemon holds the crown. Anyway, guys, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope my ranting and drabbling on didn't annoy you guys. I didn't realize it. I probably won't realize it fully until I start editing this video. So <laughs> I'll probably just. I'll probably see they be editing my video, watching, listening to myself going, God, shut up. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed. Um, subscribe for me if you want to see more games. Also, tell me in the comments below if there's any games you want to see me do a review on or play. Tell me. I mean, let's face it. I'm not going to do a game review on a game I've never played before. So really, if you make me do a game review, I'm going to play the game. So you could always just ask me to play the game and then do a review on it. Either one. But yeah, so thank you guys so much for watching. And I hope to see you guys in the next adventure.